I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about a new CSS framework, a new Facebook API you might want to use, new development techniques, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we're going to be talking about a new CSS framework. Now, the hugely popular Bootstrap and Foundation frameworks just announced a new merger. Now, with each framework steadily gaining popularity, the authors of each framework decided that they didn't want to keep duplicating work. Now, the new CSS framework is going to be available immediately and provide full backward compatibility with all existing versions of both frameworks by combining the CSS selectors and the markup. Now, Here's an example from the documentation for creating a three-column grid layout, which is something that we're all pretty well used to using. Uh, now, you can see we have something right here. We start with a regular div row. Uh, so we say div class equals row. Now, what's nice about this is we can use all of the different CSS classes that we're already used to from either foundation or bootstrap. So we say div class equals row, and then we use bootstrap dash two dash compatible. Um, now, we also want to make this Bootstrap 1 compatible, so we add Bootstrap-1-compatible, dash dash Foundation-4 dash compatible, and then so on and so forth, all the way down to Foundation 1. Now, when we're going through and making the columns, that's also super easy. We just add div class equals small-2 dash large-4 dash columns, call-md1, dash call-xs6, dash Call dash MD4, and that's it. That's all we have to do to create a single column. Go through, create it uh, again for each different column we want to make. Uh, nothing could be simpler. Now, um, this is great. The new system is so much easier to develop with, uh, you know, by having developers write less code to work with all the different existing versions of Bootstrap and the foundation frameworks. Uh, it targets all previous versions of HTML, and it works with Internet Explorer beta and up. So um, the project, they just settled on a name. Um, they're calling it Bootstrap Foundation 5. So its initials are nicely BFF. One thing that's different about this project as compared to all the previous CSS frameworks is they're going to be offering long-term support with a different edition of the library called Long Term. So Bootstrap Foundation 5 Long Term, project codenamed BFFL. That's really smart. I'm glad that they combined both of those together. So instead of having to pick between Bootstrap or Foundation, you can just pick both. Yeah, why not both, right? Yeah, that's that's great. Uh, well, next up is the Facebook Prediction API. Wow, it's almost like we knew they were going to combine them at some point. It's crazy. Uh, this past week in a press release from Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg announced the Facebook Prediction API. Facebook will now allow developers to leverage Facebook's massive database to make predictions about what a user will do next, such as when they'll take a picture of their food, when they'll take a selfie at the gym, and if they're in a relationship, when they're likely to get into a very public and horribly embarrassing argument with their significant other. This will also allow Facebook advertising partners to display just the right ad at the right time, such as diet pills or relationship counseling. So the API will also enable a new autopilot feature, and this is really cool, where users can have Facebook like their friends' statuses and automatically post witty comments and hashtags, emulating the appearance of empathy and actually giving a f Hashtag I love it. Yeah. Hashtag I can't wait to implement that it's in great. my app. Yeah, yeah. That was that was one big hashtag, not a bunch of separate ones, by the way. Smart. Yeah. Uh, so next up, you know, Nick, you may have heard of test-driven development before, where you write your tests first and then you go, um, or even the Pomodoro technique where you code for 25 minutes straight on a timer and then you take a five-minute break. Yep. So this can be kind of cumbersome and, you know, sometimes your mind needs a little bit of a break. Uh, after doing the latest test-driven Pomodoro technique and scrumming your Agile pair programming, your mind needs a little bit of a break. Uh, now, recent scientific studies have proven that you're more likely to be creative after the neurons in your brain have been stimulated. This neuronal stimulation can be triggered by laughter and also has recently been discovered to be triggered by an evolutionary response in humans, which is activated in the same areas of the brain as those responsible for protecting 
offspring. Programming luminary Corey Haynes has recently discovered how to activate this technique using pictures of young animals. So a new application has recently come out that harnesses these findings. Now the application works like this. One or two people will be programming, potentially in pairs, as pair programming. Now as soon as the webcam on your computer detects your attention being diverted from the coding task at hand, a picture of a cute animal is shown on the screen. Now the coder can then click on the picture of this animal for pictures of more cute animals. So this revolutionary programming methodology is called awe-driven development, or ADD. That's smart. Yeah, I, I, I really like that. I mean, that's going to make it a lot easier to, you know, stay focused, but take a break when you need it. And, you know. Yeah, I, no, and like, let's go swimming. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Well, uh, next up is Google Sash. Now, it's no secret that Google has been working on wearables and other forms of technology that use the Android operating system. So like Google Glass is an example of this as well. Uh, this week, Google introduced Google Sash, a wearable computing environment that sits on your hips in a pouch. Kind Ooh, like a, fashionable. Kind of like a fanny pack, basically. So in an attempt to compete with Apple and its minimalist interface design, Google Sash provides very few interface elements. The beta Google Maps Sash application uses an internal gyroscope and haptic vibrations in different parts of the pouch to let the user know which way they should move. Oh, that's very cool. So, of course, Google has really high hopes for the fanny pack and announced a couple of launch partners. Oh, the cool. first version of Sash will be available with Google Sash Maps for directions as well as an activity tracker. Oh, okay, so like count your steps, kind of like a Fitbit. Yeah, exactly. And some of the initial partners are really excited about the prospect of having the hip pack vibrate uncontrollably as users pass a sponsored establishment. So the vibrations can only be stopped by entering the place of business and by using an in-app purchase of 99 cents to 4.99 for the product. And I'm sure we'll be covering the APIs here on the Treehouse show. Yeah, uh, oh, definitely. Uh, version two of Google Sash will respond to thrusting motions to take photos from the integrated camera and will also be available in different colors compared to the denim only first release. Wow, I can't wait to get my Google Sash and wear it everywhere. I'm super excited. I will be the bell of the ball. Well, that's all that we have time for this week. I am at Nick RP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, make sure to check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show, and please don't forget to rate us. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, maybe better videos, about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.